In my last video, when I was riding this brand new ZTZ fork, I heard a major knocking sound at the end of the ride, and it sounded like something was loose inside of the lower part of the fork. So in today's video, I'm gonna be ripping apart this fork and seeing what's wrong with it. But before we do that, I know the guys at WolfTick picked up a ZTZ Ultimate fork of their own, and I need to let them know about the problems. Yeah? Hey, John and Seven. Hey man, I gotta warn you about that ZTZ fork. We're about to score it right now. Well, dude, my ZTZ fork has something majorly wrong with it. Really? Yeah, man, there's something like loose in the lowers or something. I'm actually gonna rip apart the fork right now and do a full diagnosis to see what's wrong. Yeah, we had a, we had a few problems. We'll let everybody know that you're gonna be tearing that apart. That's your department, not ours. For sure. so we, we ride it like it is and we score it, you know, so. Well, dang, man, that's crazy that you had problems too. All right, I definitely have to let everybody know about this fork. All right, man. All right, well, good luck with that. All right, man, see ya. Later. All right, let's see if we can recreate this knocking sound that I heard. And I've rigged up a GoPro to the fork leg, and I'm just gonna compress the fork a few times to see if I can find it. All right, just gonna review the GoPro footage and... Oh! That is way worse than I expected. The damper shaft is punching through the lower leg. That means the damper shaft isn't even screwed into the lower. I just thought something was loose, but this could be a fatal error. Let's rip this fork apart right now. So this is what we're looking at on the GoPro, and this is the rebound knob, but this is attached to the damper shaft, and with it punching through the lowers like that, that's a big deal because it's not even screwed into the lower, and this little nut right here is the only thing holding that damper onto the lower. Now, full disclaimer, I did take apart the lowers and I added oil because this fork was bone dry. There was no oils in the lower and the fork did not feel smooth at all. And you can especially hear that on WolfTick's video. They just don't sound good. So this is the damper shaft right here and it does not screw into the lower. Something like this should not be able to be pressed in freely. And you can hear the threads right here drag against the threads on the lower. So that means the only thing holding together the top of the fork to the bottom of the fork is this thin little nut right here. And this is a really thin aluminum. I could definitely see this thing breaking on any kind of downhill. Now every fork is different, but usually there's a crush washer right here. And that crush washer seals the damper shaft to the lower fork and makes it so there's no oil leaking out. Now I added oil, but with the fork damper punching through like it did, there's oil everywhere, it's leaking. So the lower can't even hold oil and it will definitely wear down way faster than all the others. So this side is the air shaft and there's just one little Allen bolt here. So this is the nut for the damper and this is the bolt for the air shaft. And these are the only two things holding in the entire lower part of the fork. And just to clarify, the lower part of the fork is what holds on your front wheel. So this thing could easily break off and then you have this tiny little bolt holding it in. Now I know exactly why this fork says warning, do not use for downhill or free ride. Let's see if there's any O-rings on this fork at all. Well, that was not on there very tight. With it being on there that loose, how can I trust that this would hold air? Well, there's the air spring. I see some grease on there, but I don't see is any O-rings right there to seal off the air chamber. Just these threads will not create a very good seal. So that means uh, the fork could potentially be leaking air over time. Well, this air spring looks about the same. A lot less grease here, but also no O-ring. So this other fork is the same thing. Might not even hold air that well. Oh, I see an O-ring, it's a miracle. Oh wow, this is not on tight at all. This ZTZ Ultimate air cap also has an O-ring, but man, that was so loose on the fork. Next up, let's take apart the damper body. Oh, that's not very tight. And I think it's safe to say that I'm not gonna be putting these forks back together, so I'm just gonna start throwing stuff in the trash.
So these are both forks completely disassembled. So a damper body in a somewhat decent fork is in a fluid bath, but these are some sort of damper cartridges that are just kind of all one piece and they are non-serviceable. You cannot service these. And also if you're talking about servicing, these air springs, well, they don't have an O-ring, so what's there to service on those too? I mean, maybe you could grease them up. I guess you could service this air cap and put a new O-ring on that, but it ties these two pieces in together, and I mean, what's the point? If this has an O-ring and this doesn't, well, then there's no point. And one more thing, I wanna check out the seals and the dust wipers to see what they look like. So let's pull these apart. I found the best way to remove these dust wipers is with a big old huge wrench. Oh no. So these dust wipers are not that impressive either. And they're not that thick. And normally there would be a foam O-ring right in here to help prevent dust and dirt from mixing with the fork oil. And the fork oil is necessary to keep everything moving, you know, up and down real smooth. Instead of the foam underneath this, there's this weird plastic thing. Like, what is this? I've never seen this before. And like, what does that even do? This might have actually been sliding up and down on the on the stanchion. And if that happens, then, you know, it's going to scratch and probably even start leaking air, leaking oil. So everything about this build is just strange. Well, I really wanted these forks to work because the guys at ZTZ have great customer service and they're pretty receptive. But if your customer service is a five out of five, but your product is a zero out of five, well, can't really polish a turd. And if they were smart, they'd use this video to produce a better fork. And I'm no stranger to ZTZ forks failing on me. Earlier in the year, I had a pair of their forks leak oil everywhere right after installation. And I reached out to ZTZ and they said that they had fixed the issue and sent me this updated fork. So I guess by fixing the issue, they just removed all the fork oil. A fork can't leak if it doesn't have oil. Well, after noticing the major problem with the ZTZ Ultimate fork, I reached out to them to let them know about their fatal flaw and I told them that their fork needs to be seriously checked before any more are sold. And they responded to me by saying, this is not a quality problem. We have checked the fork many times before leaving the factory. It may be a problem during transportation. So what do you guys think? Is this a quality problem or a transportation problem? Well, this is pretty much the end of a chapter for me. I'm not really interested in using Chinese forks anymore. If ZTZ does produce a really good fork and wants me to test it out, hey, I'll ride it. The lesson here is that you get what you pay for. Exposing the poor production of this fork might hurt me for potential sponsorships, but my word and trust with the Saga Squad is everything to me. ZTZ never paid me or told me what to say, but they did send me free parts. And I did have affiliate links to their forks, so that basically makes me a salesman of their parts in a way. And if I betray the audience by pushing junk, well then how can I be trusted? That's why this video was completely necessary to warn everyone, and I really hope no one gets hurt from these forks. So if you appreciate my honesty by calling it how it is, let me know by hitting that subscribe button. Now I'm left wondering how I can get this Trek ready to be sold. Luckily, I have great supporters out there like Tyler who bought me five cups of coffee, and that's gonna definitely help get this Trek ready to be sold. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one.